Hello and welcome to Shipwreck Sean's On The Menu. This is the show where we take pop culture things and we make cocktails out of them. Now, anyone who knows me knows that my favorite movie is Fellowship of the Ring. And any time, I will throw down and we will watch the entire extended edition trilogy. It's the best trilogy. It's great. It transports you. It takes you away. It's amazing. And I wanted to make some drinks based on it. My idea going into this trio of drinks is I wanted to kind of find something that represents kind of each group uh, on, in Middle Earth. So you've got your hobbits, your men, your elves, and your dark lord. So we've got three drinks. We have a good tilled earth for the hobbits. We have a last alliance, which is for elves and men. And then we have a really fancy, cool drink that I'm really proud of called an Eye of Sauron. So let's assemble the fellowship and let's make ourselves some drinks. Anybody who knows me knows that one of my happy places is Hobbiton, especially those opening bits of the Fellowship of the Ring where you've got that concerning Hobbit's theme. It's just, it brings me home. It makes me happy. And any, also, anyone who knows me knows that I love uh, cocktails that are a little bitter, a little earthy, a little kind of dirty. And it always reminds me of that line where Bilbo sang, what things do hobbits like? And one of those is good tilled earth. And so I thought, well, I will make a drink that evokes that line. Uh, and so this is, um, I used the last word, kind of the profile. So where it is a spirit, two liqueurs, and a juice. So we've got lime juice. We have gin. I'm using uh, Battle Standard from KO here in Manassas. Well, up in Manassas. Uh, it's a navy strength rum. It's 54%. It's great. Use whatever gin you like. You can really change the profile of any drink by changing up your gin. I've made this with gray whale before, and that was a lot of fun uh, as well. Then we've got Suze, which is our French uh, gentian amaro. Uh, the best way to describe Suze is it's French Campari. I like it better than Campari. And lastly, we have uh, Genipi, which is an alpine liqueur. Uh, these are all kind of your not quite chartreuse uh, liqueurs. Since we're in a uh, drought of green chartreuse, uh, we're going to use Genipi. I've made this drink with green chartreuse, and it's a little more powerful than I like. Uh, but Genipi, I can tap a top. Genipi works really well for it. So we're going to use Genipi here for this. All right, so let's go ahead and make this drink. We're going to start with our uh, lime. Remember to always uh, freshly squeeze your juices. I did that before we started. So one ounce of lime juice in the tin. One ounce of gin. One ounce of our Suze. And last but not least, one ounce of our Genipi. Again, since this is a last word variant, everything is in equal parts. Uh, you, some work better at three quarters of an ounce, some at an ounce. You know, you can change your ratio. Just make sure you stay even. All right, now we need ice. Get some hand flavored ice out of the pineapple. Then we're gonna go ahead and shake. Come on, there we go. All right. Get our coop out of the freezer. Always freeze your coops. And then we're going to strain. And it's got this real nice kind of uh, greenish, yellow, earthy flavor, or uh, 
kind of visual profile. Mm. And then the flavors, you immediately get hit with that um, gentian. It's kind of bitter. But then the genipi comes in with all those uh, alpine uh, herbs, like your, um, it's in kind of anise and um, licorice kind of a little peppery and a little grassy. Comes in around the sous, and then the gen is kind of working again as a binding agent, and the lime juice is kind of pulling all of it together. So it's a really, really fun, interesting, complex drink that you're going to want to sip on. All right, so this drink is called a Last Alliance, uh, referencing, of course, the Last Alliance of elves and men that were gathered together to fight against Sauron in the, in the uh, War of the Ring, uh, which would basically be the prologue to Fellowship of the Ring. This is where you've got um, Isildur cuts the ring from Sauron's finger, where he will not cast it into the fire. Can't you just hear uh, uh, Hugo weaving, uh, telling him to destroy it? Anyway, what I wanted to capture here is kind of a mixture of what I feel like uh, men would bring to the table and then what elves bring to the table and kind of mix it together in another last word riff because I love my last word riffs. So to start, our base spirit here is Applejack, which is an apple brandy. Uh, if you can get the bottled and bond uh, Lairds, it's 100% apple. It's not brandy and then some apple. It's great. So this plus apricot liqueur kind of represent men. And then, because this is a special drink, and I feel like one of the best things to represent elves is green chartreuse. So you know that it's special if I pull out the green chartreuse bottle. And then we've got some lemon juice to kind of help round things out. And I thought also just because it helps kind of bring out the flavors of the apple and the apricot, we're going to have a little bit of uh, allspice dram. So this is a pimento dram. This stuff is great. Uh, it is fall in liquor form. All right. So let's get started making this drink. I needed a jigger. And a spoon. <laughs> Things I forget. All right. We're going to start with, um, you only have a bar spoon of allspice dram in this. The thing to remember about allspice dram is a little goes a long, long way. A lot of people use just like dashes or bar spoons or fourths of it. So when you get a bottle, you're going to have it for a while. It's potent. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and put in three quarters of an ounce of our lemon juice. Always try to work from your least expensive ingredients to your most expensive. So if you mess up, you're not losing uh, good expensive things. Then we're going to go ahead and put in three quarters of an ounce of Applejack. Then we're going to put in three quarters of an ounce of apricot liqueur. And right now, this drink is basically fall in a glass. But now here, we're going to bring in um, a great differential, and it's going to really punch it up and give it this neat, round, interesting flavor, kind of like what elves always do with. Uh, three quarters of an ounce of green chartreuse, which is the best liquor out there. If you see a bottle of this, buy it, period. I don't care if you have any on your shelf, you buy it. We say hi to Guybrush. We put Guybrush out of the bar. That's Guybrush. He's a mighty pirate. All right, we need ice. Ice in our tin. And we're going to go ahead and shake. Mm. 
Then we're going to go ahead and get our coop out of the freezer. Because what do we do? We freeze our coops. We strain our juice. All right. We we'll go ahead and we're going to give that a pour. This is served without a garnish. And this is a last alliance. Mm. You immediately, you're hit with the apricot. And then kind of in the back of your throat, you get the green chartreuse, which has got, it's, uh, it's hard to describe. Green chartreuse, if you've never had it, but it's, it's 150 botanicals. It's, you get a lot of anise, you get like um, pepper, some fennel, you get um, green is the best way to describe it. It just tastes like this great, punchy green. And um, then the apple kind of runs throughout it along with the allspice dram. And it's just... It's, it's a refreshing fall is basically the best way to describe this drink. And if you can find yourself some green chartreuse, you should make this. Also, you should always have Applejack behind your bar. It is a unsung great spirit. So for our final drink today, we have got the Eye of Sauron, the Dark Lord himself. His eye, lidless, wreathed in flame. So uh, taking that great line delivered by uh, Sean Bean in Fellowship, I wanted to make something that was tall, that was fiery, and had a really cool garnish. So this is an Eye of Sauron. Here's what you're going to need to make it. You're going to need a uh, pepper vodka. So this is a Serrano vodka from Trial and Error here in Richmond. But you can find a hot pepper vodka in just about any uh, liquor store. Brands are all over. But I love to use Richmond when I can. Then you're going to need blood orange juice to get this nice kind of uh, red look that we want. A little lemon juice to help kind of round things out. And then um, hot honey. So I've made a syrup out of this hot honey. It is, um, it's a hot honey out of Norfolk. I forget the name. I'll put it in the uh, links. But it's a three to one, one part honey, three part water. Just heat your water up, put your honey in it. Stir. You want to turn honey into syrups because honey is very viscous and it's hard to shake with. But this hot honey plus the Serrano is going to give this drink a real aggressive bite to it. Uh, it has a little simple because it needs, uh, simple works kind of as a medium to like roll all your flavors together. And then what you're going to need is a little wedge of blood orange like this and some maraschino cherries because we're going to make an eye as a garnish. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make the drink, then we'll make the garnish. And then we'll pour and we'll set. All right. So to start, we need two ounces of our uh, Serrano vodka. Then we need three ounces of our blood orange juice. That's one and a half. And just barely. Uh, that'll take probably up close to three, three and a half blood oranges. Uh, they don't give you as much juice as you would like. Then we need half an ounce of our lemon juice. Half an ounce of our hot honey syrup. And if you want to make this drink hotter, you can put more hot honey in it. or um, a little hot sauce. The original version of this had hot sauce, but I find the hot honey really gives you the sweet that you kind of want on the back end of something that's really spicy, and it's less um, aggressive. Like it was spicier with the hot honey than it was with the Cholula, 
and it wasn't as rough and aggressive. And I like that since it is Sauron, he kind of slides in uh, smooth. You don't realize until it is way too late. And then we've got a quarter of an ounce of uh, simple syrup. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this aside right quick. And we're going to make our garnish. So to make the eye of Sauron, what you're going to do is you're going to get yourself out a cherry. And you've already got your wedge. What you're going to do is you're going to kind of run your uh, cocktail skewer through that. And then you're going to kind of come through on the other side. And you're going to make kind of an eye like that. All right. We'll set that aside. And now we're going to shake. So again, a little hand-flavored ice in our tin. You don't need to shake this with a ton of ice because we're going to serve it over ice. Give it a shake. Then we're going to take, kind of take one of your tall glasses. Realize that my ice has started to freeze to the bottom of my ice container. All right. Then we are going to strain it in. We're going to put our all-seeing, ah. Uh, lidless eye wreathed in flame then you're going to stick a straw behind it to kind of hold up the eye and that is an eye of sauron mm. okay immediately you are hit by the serrano peppers and then the honey and it's just it's smooth it goes down. The uh, blood orange juice brings a bit of sweetness to it, but they are a little tarter than normal oranges. So that's why you also need the honey and the simple. And then the lemon juice is just kind of helping again to round everything out. This is a great drink. It looks nice and friendly and like it's going to be sweet. And it is, it is not sweet. It is aggressively spicy. That is an eye of Sauron. So this is the part of the video where I bring down my wife Elizabeth and she tries the drinks, her and Gaius today. So first off, Liz, we have got a good tilled earth. Mm, it smells like Sue's. Yes. <laughs> so I smell um, kind of grassy, earthy, a little bit of dirt notes. Um, it's like lemon. Oh, that's delicious. Yeah, you can definitely taste the Sue's, um, which, as I said, earthy, grassy, tastes like fresh cut grass. A little bit of lemon underneath uh, that. Lime, but yeah. Okay, so citrus underneath that. Um, dry, not too sweet, um, really refreshing, kind of tastes like the beginning of spring. Oh, I see Guybrush wanted to come back. This is a Last Alliance. It looks the same um, as the other one. Well, they are. Um, uh, but they smell quite different. This smells much sweeter and kind of fruitier. They're both last word riffs. Okay, so. that makes sense. This isn't as dry. It's sweeter. There's more fruitiness underneath it. Um, maybe apple? Yep, it's apple jack. Um, and then a little bit of kind of baking spice, too, maybe. There's some allspice dram in there. Um, yep underneath it very nice very refreshing as well but definitely sweeter than this one is this is very dry right and then lastly we have an eye of sauron um well of course like who doesn't love that garnish? that's perfect um and it looks so much it looks so fun this yeah. looks like summer <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's spicy like, you don't expect it to be spicy when you look at it yeah um it's got a little bit of tiki, maybe some like pomegranate or cherry in it. Blood orange. Uh, there you go. Um, but uh, the first thing that hits you is that it's spicier than you expect it to be. Right. You can mm. get kind of the um, 
uh, spicy honey flavor. They don't call Sauron the deceiver for nothing. But it's really good. That's interesting. I'd say that's the most interesting of the three. All right, so which, which one would you like to take with you, you and Gaius? I think I'm in the mood for something really dry and a little bit. All right. Well, that's it for this week's episode. Join us next week when we're going to do drinks based on Shakespeare. So stick around for that. Have a good day, everyone.